All right, well, welcome to this live edition of the Mile High Endurance and 303 Radio podcast. Uh, Bill Plock and myself are really honored to have four-time English Channel crosser all at one time, nonstop, Sarah Thomas with us. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been, we have been so excited about this interview. We want to get to know you. We want our okay. audience here to get to know you a little bit. Before we get into this amazing thing that you've done, we want to get to know you a little better. Okay. And so we have this little game we like to play called Two Truths and a Lie, where we ask our guests for three statements about themselves, two of which are truths, one of which is a lie, and Bill and I are going to try to guess which is which. <laughs> now we have body nice. language. Now we yeah. have body, body language. language. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we play this game on so my I'm swim sometimes. I'm going to take your pulse while you're doing yeah, this. Yeah, you can tell. sweaty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my team does this with me sometimes on my long swims to keep me, like, occupied. Ah, so okay, people sure. on the crew will... So I am usually the guesser. Oh, I'm not I usually see. the teller. <laughs> so you play a little trivial pursuit while you're swimming. Yeah, so we're flipping the tables on you. Here. Yeah. So whenever you're ready, give us your three statements, two of which are truth, one of which is a lie. I can't think of my lie. Oh, well. Uh, all right, well. Hang on. I'm going to come up with something. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Um, let's see here. I have three dogs. The farthest I've ever swum is 104 miles. And I really hate cats. Okay. Uh, I'd say your lie is you hate cats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Our cat died this summer. Aww. We miss him. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> so you have three dogs. We do have three dogs. Uh, what are the dogs' names? Um, Lucy and Zoe are beagles. And okay. Kelsey Jo is this like weird border collie corgi mix. Okay. She's very goofy looking. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? No. <laughs> just, just, I don't know. <laughs> um, my husband would tell you that I love Lucy the most. Okay. All right. She's my girl. She's dumb. She's the dumbest dog you'll ever <laughs> meet. <laughs> so when you talk about the distance that you swam, the longest mm -hmm. distance that you swam, 108 miles, you said? 104. 104 miles. Mm -hmm. Does that, is that like um, as the crow flies or is that take into account currents and all that sort of thing? Yeah, that distance is um, what I did in Lake Champlain. So yeah. that was a nonstop swim in a lake, basically point to point. So point to no point. currents, yeah, nothing, just straight 104 miles. How long did that take you? 67 hours. And there's no sharks in there. So it's like mind, mind's free, right? Um, there's lampreys in there. Oh, really? Yeah, don't Google them. They're scary. <laughs> wow. Um, they're like they're eels and they have like weird mouths oh i know what you're talking about yeah, yeah. and they like s attach to you have you ever had one no but we saw them and i thought oh. they were going to be like you know like normal size like yeah. you could like grab them but we swam Would you grab one i didn't but we swam through a bunch of them um and i didn't see them thank goodness but my crew did and they're all like laughing you know like covering their mouths <laughs> and like trying not to look at me and I, later I asked, I'm like, how big were they? And my husband was like, big, like as big <laughs> as his forearm. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't have to run into one of those. Wow, no kidding. Because that would have scared me. They well, were we, there. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a lot to cover before yes. we get to that. Um, let's start back with, tell us about where you grew up and kind of like, what was your introduction to sport? Like, what was your first sport? Swimming. Swimming. Really, I mean. Straight through it. Yeah, we tried other sports. Like, I'm a really bad basketball player. Okay. Um, you know, I played, like, volleyball in middle school. I'm terrible with things that involve balls. I'm a terrible runner. Um, they tried to get me to run track one season, and I'm like, no, nope, I'm not going to do it. So I've, I've tried other sports, but, yeah, I've been on a swim team basically since I was 10. Since you were 10. You said we. So there's some siblings in there? Oh, I have a lot of siblings. Yeah, tell us about your siblings. <laughs> um I'm a blended family, okay. so I've got four sisters and a brother of okay. one full sister and the rest are half. Okay. All right. So All right. big family. So you uh, start swimming at the age of 10. What, what was your distance, you know, in high school? You know, I started off, I was a breaststroker mm -hmm. beginning, um, and then I quit getting better. Mm -hmm. And my coach said, well, why don't we try you in the mile? So they threw me into the distance events and that is what stuck. Oh, okay. So that was... That was your, that was your, you wanted to do longer stuff. Yeah, that yeah. was, yeah, it was a definitely a much better fit just from like a mental standpoint once I gave up on the brushstroke thing. I think it was probably my sophomore, junior year of high school that we started in with like the 500, the 800, the mile. What did you like the most about it? Like what was like, 
What was the attraction to swimming longer distance? Yeah, well, it takes me forever to get warmed up. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> um, you know, I'm trying to sprint at 200, and I'm not, I'm not going until the end of it. So, in a mile, you get a little bit more time to warm up into it. Um, and I always joke because turns out I needed more than a mile. You know, like my first 10k swim. I was like, oh, this is better. We're going to warm up for the first 5K, Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. Then, then pour it on. Yeah, I can sprint a 10K. Interesting. What, what was your first sort of uh, open water endurance swim that was of, of a substantial length? Yeah, um, I started with the Horse Tooth 10K. Oh, yeah. Um, that's local here in Fort Collins, so that was my first, my first one. And, and when was that? In 2007. 2007, okay. Yeah, I was 25. Wow. So, okay. yeah. So were you like one of the youngest swimmers there? Um, on the younger end, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I felt old, you know, like you're out of college, your like swimming career is over. And then all of a sudden I'm doing this like weird 10K thing. Um, my college, like two of my college friends kayaked for me. And I'm like, this is weird. Um, and then it was awesome. So you, you weren't swimming professionally. You're, no. You've got a full-time job. Like what's your career yeah. outside of swimming yeah i am a healthcare recruiter okay so i lucky i get to work from home but you know it's a 40 plus hour a week job so i do all my swimming around working yeah well so all right so talk about the training for an ultra swim or even a 10k let me swim. let me ask yeah. Yeah, more. Yeah. so talk about the progression from a horse tooth oh, which yeah. a lot of people have done right. right to maybe that first kind of scary channel crossing or right that open, you know, the swim and the ocean, where, right. where did, how did that progress? Yeah, so I did that horse to 10K maybe three years in a row. And somewhere in like year two or three, I was like, I think I could do more. Um, and because of horse tooth, I was meeting people that had done channel swims um, and they're just regular people, you know, I'm like, they're regular like me. If they can do it, maybe I can, maybe I can do it too. So um, I guess it was in 2010, so, that was when I did my very first long swim, 21 miles in the Catalina Channel. Okay. So, so that's kind of where I jumped from 10K to 20 miles. To Catalina Channel. Mm -hmm. That's scary. It was. And you start at <laughs> night in the middle for that one. You start at like midnight. There's sharks in that one. There are sharks yeah. in that one. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Wow. Um, I was too dumb. I don't think I knew what I was getting myself <laughs> into. <laughs> that's crazy. Ignorance there, is bliss. What other channels have you swam in around the world? Um, let's see here. I have swum the English Channel, obviously. Yeah, four times. <laughs> yeah, four, four times. times. <laughs> I started with it once. Um, I've swum around the island of Manhattan. Um, oh, that's the man, the marathon. The yeah, Manhattan the marathon. Manhattan Island yeah. Marathon yeah. swim. Yeah. yeah, it's like twenty-eight and a half miles, but that one has a good current assist because it's in the rivers. Oh. Um, let's see here. I have swum down and back across Lake Tahoe. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's like forty-two that. miles in that vicinity. Um, I have swum the length of Loch Ness, like 15 people in the world have done that because um, it's really cold. It's like 52 degree water. Um, wow. And if the weather's not nice, then it can be kind of brutal. Wow. So that's a big one. I'm trying to think of it. Have the you done the New thing. Zealand? The, the, oh, yeah. I have. You <laughs> yeah. did that? I have swum um, between the two islands of New Zealand. I did that in March. So I, I knew a guy that was doing that. I swam at the DAC and he was mm -hmm. training there okay. and he'd swam for the Israeli Olympic team. Oh, cool. I forget his name off the top of my head now. But we talked about that swim and the channel, the currents on that one are really crazy, mm -hmm. right? How was that swim? That swim, um, you know, I was about six months, I know we're gonna talk about this later, but I was um, about six months out of radiation treatment. So it was like really my first big swim back. Um, and that swim is relatively short. Um, so I wasn't like mentally prepared for it to be super brutal. Um, I was thinking it would take me like maybe nine or 10 hours. Um, and we had a really rough day. The weather was just like rotten. It was really windy and the currents went, were just crazy. Um, and that swim took me 14 hours. Um, and I thought it was going to take nine. So, um, it, it was definitely a battle of wills. Um, there was another girl who had started the swim basically at the same time that I did. Um, and she swam for about 12 hours and decided she'd had enough. Um, it was brutal. I was swallowing water. I was sick. It was crazy. Is there one that stands out as the hardest of all the different things you've done? You know, I, usually what jumps out to me is Catalina, that very first one I did. I didn't have my nutrition dialed in yet. Mm. Um, I was definitely well trained. It wasn't that, but 
I bonked really hard. So like the last four hours of that swim are probably the most pain I've ever been in. Yeah. And so the English Channel, probably since it's so, it's notoriety is mm -hmm. unparalleled, no doubt. And four times, how many miles total was that then? Um, as the crow flies, it's 84 miles. Okay. How many miles did you swim? You know, I don't even really know. You don't know? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you weren't I, checking your Garmin. No, every I wasn't. Hour. I wasn't checking it. The, um, <laughs> the currents just push and pull you so much. It doesn't. It's almost irrelevant to me. So wow. it took about as long as I thought it was going to take. So. And you pilot boat and help you navigate the currents because right. I was looking at the map and you had all kinds of yes. interesting yeah. tracks. Yes, we went. Um, so you can go on a neap tide or a spring tide. Um, spring tides move a lot more. So we went on a spring tide. Um, so I knew going into it that we were going to get pushed and pulled a lot. And then you just have to trust your boat captain. He's probably taken at least 100 people across over the years. So he knows what he's doing. So you just trust him to know what the currents are doing. Follow so the boat. What went into that decision? Like, why did you make the decision to do the spring tide versus the other? Um, you know, he booked me on both. Um, okay. So there's usually a really long wait list to swim the English Channel. And so when I reached out to him originally, I said, hey, I've got this really crazy idea. Um, he knew that we needed a big window. Hmm. Um, so he booked me um, a week on a neap tide and a week on a spring tide. Um, and the weather was not good that first week. Hmm. Uh, we would have preferred to have gone on a neap tide, but the weather conditions were not ideal for that. So when the English Channel gives you 48 hours of good weather, you take it. Can you describe the difference between those tides and kind of like why one's more preferent? preferable than the other? Yeah, just the neap tide, um, the water isn't moving as much, right? Okay. So um, you, I would have had a much more direct path. It ah. probably would have taken roughly the same time, um, just because on the spring tide, I was swimming more and moving more, but the currents were a lot stronger. Right. So it, you know, if you compared my overall speed on the spring tide to a neap tide, I probably appeared to be swimming a lot faster on that spring tide, but that was just because the currents were pushing and pulling in weird ways. So, so maybe before we get into some of the specifics of that swim and, and the feet in general, mm -hmm. I googled top human endurance feats of all time. Okay. Okay. And it's a little <laughs> goofy, right? Because sometimes like this guy was the number one on the list. He did a um, an hour and a half plank. Oh, God. Okay. Cool. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That's hard. <laughs> or Jack Lane second towing 70 rowboats while shackled. That sounds Difficult, fun. no doubt. Mm -hmm. But I, I sort of like to focus on maybe a skilled athletic endurance event, not mm -hmm. just something anybody could do if they were just dumb right. enough, right? <laughs> so I personally think Alex Hanold's climb up El Capitan, because obviously any slip, he dies. Right. Heart rate goes up, he dies. Right. There's no right. There's no out. Yeah, I was sick just watching Free Solo. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where is your feet in this, in this list? I don't know. Hopefully above the guy towing rowboats. I would hope, but it, but I mean, clearly it's one of for the ages. Nobody's done it. Right. How does that feel to you? That's a hard question. Um, you know, I've progressed, you know, like I did hard swims leading up to it. So to me, it was just another swim and I still kind of trying to grasp the idea that it meant something to other people in the way that it did. So, you know, for me, I just did a swim. You know, I've been dreaming about it for three years, um, planning for it, training for it, thinking about it, and I just did it. So I don't know where I would put it on the list. Because it's <laughs> going to be on there at some point. This was written yeah. before your okay. accomplishment. It's got to it's got to show up at some point, right? And, and it was funny because we were talking before this started, and I'm just going to label you the Forrest Gump of swimmers because <laughs> you told me that yep. you didn't expect a camera crew to be there when you finished. No. You didn't even expect all of these people no. like us wanting to interview right. you. Not you just went out and swam like he went out and run. Right. I was, I was watching this last night, by the way, on okay. the, and I was with, and the running scene is always my favorite because he mm -hmm. starts with a, no beard and he has a beard. Yep. And then there's, yep. That's how it was for you, right? Yeah. So I you mean, just wanted to go swim. Yeah. I just... It was something I thought I could do and I thought it would be cool and wanted to prove something to myself. I don't know. Um, 
went and did it. What, was it the specific idea of doing the four channel foot channel mm -hmm. crossings? That yes. was the specific idea. Yes. When did that occur to you? In the shower? In, in a conversation with a mentor? Like yeah. When did it occur to you? Yeah, I was actually sitting on a on a boat in the English Channel watching one of my friends do it. Um, oh. And I was training for, I was in the middle of training for my first 80 mile swim. Um, and I kind of, you know, I hadn't been back to England since I had done my own swim. And I'm sitting there and watching him and thinking, man, this is just 80 miles. You know, if I can do 80 miles in a couple of months, maybe, maybe I'd like to come back and try it. Um, I knew that people had done it three times before. Four people have swum it three times, but no one had ever done it four. And so that, you know, really, it was just watching my friend swim, thinking, this is a pretty special place. I'd like to, I'd like to come back here and see what maybe I could do. Just to see what you could do. Mm -hmm. Did you know, I mean, did you consciously think that will make history? I mean, no. No, just, no. I just want to swim. Yeah, I just want okay, to come swim. We're making this awful, awful complicated, aren't we? I know. <laughs> I know. You didn't get sponsors. You didn't no, get... No, <laughs> yeah, there's, I, you know, there's very little sponsors to be had in the world of open water swimming. I bet they wish they had sponsored you now, <laughs> right? know, with all the yeah. coverage and the yeah. whatever. That's interesting. Yeah. So 